Welcome to our first tutorial proper. Here we've got the chance to introduce you to the helicopter and explain some fundamentals of helicopter flight. Hopefully this will prove useful as I may refer to some of these features or concepts in future lessons. Our next step is the pre-flight inspection. It's an important process verifying the integrity of crucial systems. In general, we're inspecting any visible damage to the fuselage. If a part on the helicopter has dings, nicks, scratches, or corrosion, it probably shouldn't be there. Use your head. The pitted tubes can be blocked by things like bugs. Check if they need to be cleared. This tube, usually on the front of the helicopter, is used as an input for various indicators. The pitted provides information on things such as airspeed by measuring ram air, which is the airflow impacting it. That's it. Good. The static ports must also be checked for obstructions. These ports measure air pressure directly. They are used as input for instruments such as Vertical Speed Indicator or VSI. Good. Good. Inspect the condition and functionality of the skids. Skids are the most often used landing gear because they can be used to land on many types of terrain. They often have dampers, so impact shocks don't affect the main rotor. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Check both the top and bottom of the rotor blade for dents, delamination, and anything that looks questionable. The main rotor provides vertical and horizontal lift. It allows the helicopter to move forward, aft, left, and right across the ground. The rotor system can consist of a single main rotor, as in the case here, or dual rotors. Yeah, exactly. Inspect the fuel cap and visually check the level. We need to inspect the fuel level and check for leaks. Leaks in the system cause a drop of pressure, so these should be checked for too. Check the condition and security of the vertical fin. Verify no play or movement, dings, dents, etc. The vertical and horizontal fins are designed to provide directional stability in forward flight. The stabilizers decrease the pedal workload for the pilot and reduce the amount of power required by the tail rotor for directional control. That's it. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. On the tail, often using torque stripes, we check the security of all attaching bolts, pitch links, nuts, cotter pins, etc. Verify the condition of the blade, freedom of movement, both flapping and pitch change too. The tail compensates for the drag of the transmission of the rotor system during auto-rotation and provides heading control. <laughs> 